the veterinary at the veterinary teaching hospital here at UC Davis, and I um, am an internist and criticalist, and I happen to do during the springtime most of my clinical work is on foals, so this is a, a timely topic um, for that reason. And if anybody has questions along the way, I will try to keep an eye on the chat or you can just unmute and, and ask. Um, maybe, maybe after every few slides, I'll take a quick pause. So today's topic is neonatal isoerythrolysis and that's a mouthful. So people usually refer to it as NI. And what does this mean? So I kind of broke it down here in terms of definition. Um, neonatal refers to newborn, of course. And then the isoerythrolysis part means that there are antibodies that are destroying red blood cells. Erythro, it refers to red blood cell and lysis refers to destruction. So ISO means the antibodies are produced by one individual against antigens or foreign proteins that are present in a number, uh, another member of the same species. In this case, that other member is the foal. So the mare is making antibodies against her foal's red blood cells. And that's why it's called isoantibody. Also synonym would be alloantibody. Again, these are antibodies that are produced against a member of the same species, not yourself. And in this case, it's against the red blood cells. And that member of the same species is the mare's foal. And it's erroneous. It's not it's not a uh, purposeful event. It's a mistake in the immune system. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. So basically it's when the mare is making antibodies against her own foal's red blood cells. And you all know red blood cells are very uh, critical or they're vital to survival because they carry oxygen to the tissues. And when there's destruction of red blood cells, then the animal develops anemia and that anemia leads to decreased oxygen getting to the tissues and cells and organs. So again, in the case of NI, it's destruction of red blood cells by antibodies that are made by a member of the same species in this case, they're antibodies against the foal's red blood cells made by the mother. And how do they get into the foal? How do they cause problems in the foal? Well, they get into the foal through the colostrum. That's that first milk that a mare produces after birth. And many of you know that colostrum is vital for the foal's survival because they're born without antibodies and they have to nurse that colostrum and get antibodies that the foal's mother made to protect them against things like bacteria, viruses, West Nile virus, tetanus. And without that colostrum, the foal doesn't get antibodies and they're very, very high risk of developing sepsis if they don't get that colostrum with the antibodies. Sepsis is a bloodstream infection that foals are really prone to, and it's the number one cause of illness and death in newborn foals. So that colostrum is vital. It has antibodies to protect the foal. However, on a rare occasion, there's an error, and that error is, in this case, the mother develops antibodies against the foal's red blood cells. So it's not, um, not a purposeful development, it's an, a mistake, basically. So the foals develop anemia from the red cells lysing, basically bursting 
from antibodies that are binding these red cells and the foal develops severe anemia and they turn yellow. They turn yellow because the byproduct of the red cell destruction is bilirubin and bilirubin is a yellow pigment. pigment. It's like a jaundice baby that you, you expose to UV light to get the, the yellow coloration to decrease. In this case, it's from destruction of the foal's red cells. And now why does this mistake happen? Well, normally the mare never sees the fetal blood. Normally the placenta separates the fetal blood from the mother, maternal blood. And the reason for that is the fetus has its own blood type that it inherited not only from the mother, but also from the sire. So it has its own blood type. It may or may not be the same as the mother's. If it's the same, there's no problem. If it's different, then her immune system will recognize those differences as foreign proteins and her immune system will mount a very strong response and make antibodies as though those red blood cells were a vaccine or an invading virus or an invading bacteria. So she normally would not see those red blood cell proteins, but if there's some mixing of blood, even minute amount, then her immune system will see it. What would those scenarios be? Well, if the mare has previous deliveries, previous foals, and during those foalings, those of you who have witnessed mares foaling, you, you'll know how much pressure the mare puts to expel the fetus, the foal. And during that process, there might be a little bit of bruising or a little bit of trauma and just very minute amount of blood contamination can occur. It doesn't take very much, just tiny amounts of blood exposure and the mare will mount a strong immune response. Other scenarios would be if a mare has placentitis or some kind of placental abnormality where the placental barrier is compromised and her immune system might see some of the fetal blood. Another scenario might be if a mare had a blood transfusion before and she made antibodies against that foreign blood and now those antibodies can harm her own foal. Sometimes there's not an obvious reason. That's the most, most common scenario is that nobody identified any problem, any particular issue. But what has happened is there's been a minute amount of blood mixing, minute. It doesn't take a lot of blood, very small amounts of blood. And the mare's immune response sees those fetal red blood cells and mounts a strong immune response as though she was vaccinated. It's almost like a vaccine. They're very strong proteins on the red blood cells. So whenever there's an incompatibility between the mother and the fetus in terms of blood type, and there's some mixing of blood, she can mount an immune response. I hope that makes sense. Horses have seven major blood groups, and within those, they have sub blood groups called factors, such that horses have a lot of different uh, blood types. They can have up to 400,000 different combinations of blood types based on all of those factors within the seven major blood types. So there's lots of opportunity, and within those, I have listed here these two blood types. It's called uppercase, lowercase a and uppercase Q, lowercase a. We refer to that as AA and QA. Those blood types are the strongest uh, in terms of antigen potential, meaning they will mount the greatest antibody response by the mother. So this would happen if the mother is negative for AA 
negative for QA. And the analogy would be in a human, some of you are A negative, B positive, for example. Some are O positive, which means you lack both A and B, or you might be O negative, also lack A and B. Well, it's kind of like that. If the mare doesn't have AA or QA, but the stallion does, and the fetus inherited one of one or both of those from the stallion, and then the mare sees that blood, she'll mount a very strong immune response and make a lot of antibodies. Then those antibodies get put into the colostrum. Why do they get put in the colostrum? Well, in late term pregnancy, the mother is putting all of her antibodies into the colostrum to protect the fall against tetanus, West Nile, sleeping sickness, flu, rhino, bacteria, and so on. Well, unfortunately, along with those goes the antibodies against the red blood cells. I have a notation here about mule foals. Mule foals have really foreign blood for a horse. So mares carrying mule foals are at particularly high risk because if they see a tiny amount of mule blood, i.e. donkey blood, because the mule has half antigens, half genetic material from the donkey side, the mare will mount a tremendous antibody response because donkey there's a protein instead of AA and QA, it's called donkey factor. That donkey factor is very, very strong and mounts a strong immune response. So mule foals are particularly high risk for NI because of that. Are there any questions so far? This is a depiction of what happens. So this is an example. The mare is negative for AA. The stallion was AA positive and the foal inherited the AA positive proteins on his or her red blood cells. So the mare, if on a previous pregnancy or earlier in this pregnancy saw that AA blood, she made anti-AA antibodies against them. Then the foal nurses that colostrum or that first milk, and now it develops what's called hemolytic disease, meaning the red blood cells are being attacked by the mother's antibodies, causing destruction. And the foal gets anemic and yellow and, and doesn't have enough oxygen going to its tissues. So again, mule foals are particularly high risk because their blood is so antigenic, so foreign to horses, to, to the mare. So as I mentioned, the most common blood types associated with NI are AA and QA. And then there are several other possibilities. So a lot of different types can cause NI if the mare doesn't have these blood types. And then, of course, donkey factor, which is a protein on the red blood cells of donkeys that mule foals inherit. And so mule foals are really high risk for NI. What are the signs that the foal might have NI? How do, how do you tell from looking at the foal? Well, they're depressed. They stop suckling. They develop a rapid respiratory rate because their tissues are being deprived of oxygen. And one of the real specific signs are these, pic these uh, depictions here of the yellow tinge to the membranes. So the foals get this yellow color and the big concern for that strong yellow color in a newborn foal is an eye. Also their urine, may turn red if there's lots of hemoglobin, that's the protein inside of red blood cells, or yellow from this bilirubin pigment that is a byproduct of the red cell destruction. So they get weak, stop nursing, and develop yellow membranes. Urine turns really strongly yellow or pink in color. 
This is a, pain, a painful, so you could see that even her skin is turning yellow where it should be pink. The sclera, the whites around the eyes are yellow. How do we get a diagnosis of this? Well, these are some medical tests that we use to confirm it. So one's called a Coombs test. Another is to look for the antibodies directly on the foals, red blood cells. Basically it's proving that there are antibodies from the mother on the foals, red blood cells. And then we can test the mother's blood and see does her blood have these antibodies against red blood cells. And in fact, we can also test her colostrum and you can take a, a little bit of colostrum and a little bit of foal's blood. So the foal has to be born. And we dilute the colostrum out and then mix it with the foal's blood and see, does the colostrum cause destruction or agglutination clumping of the foal's red blood cells? So that's what's happening here in this top picture. That's what a normal colostral test looks like. The red, the, the foals red blood cells just run down the tube. And same on this bottom right. They just run on down the tube. But on this on the left, that would be a positive. That's a positive because you see the red blood cells of the foal are clumped. They're stuck at the bottom of the tube and they're not running down the side of the tube, which tells us there's antibodies there clumping them. Any, any questions there so far? Not yet. I'm sorry? I just said there's none in the chat yet. None yet, okay, super. So how do we treat these folds? Well, we keep them really quiet because they're very anemic. We don't let them take in any more colostrum if they're below 48 hours of age. And that's a, that's a critical time period we'll talk about again is foals only absorb antibodies for the first 24, 36, maybe a little bit up to 48 hours. Beyond that, they don't absorb antibodies by their gut. So if they're over 48 hours and they're drinking milk that has these poisonous antibodies to their red cells, they don't absorb them. It's not a problem. It's only a problem if they ingest it in that first 36 to 48 hours, because that's the window that their gut is absorbing these antibodies. Otherwise, there's no problem if they're older than that. We usually give them oxygen and some fluids. And if they're really severe, we have to give them a blood transfusion. If they get really anemic, then we give them blood transfusions. And then just like babies with um, the, the LED lights, you know, in the old days, they would put the baby on the windowsill for the sun UV light to break down the yellow pigments. We do that as well with these foals to help them get rid of that yellow pigment. Because if, if that accumulates to a high level, it can cause problems. Okay, so that was going through what is NI, how does it occur, what does it look like, how do we diagnose it, how do we treat it? Now, most importantly is how do we prevent it? Well, it's actually pretty easy to prevent. Not a lot of uh, owners are aware of this disease, number one, and not a lot of them are aware about testing and preventing. So prevention is through screening the pregnant mare. Now it's important that you screen the mare within a two week window of foaling. If, she go, if you test her and she's negative, but she doesn't fall within two weeks of when you tested her, you have to test again. The reason for that is the level of antibody in her blood doesn't rise until the last week or two of pregnancy. Why is that? Well, the reason for that is that's the time that she's making this colostrum 
into her udder so that her baby will have these antibodies. So in the very last couple of weeks is when they're making this colostrum. So if you test and they're negative, but they fall a month later, let's say, they can, you, you know, you got a false sense of security, they can still have an NI baby because you missed the window. So what we recommend is you turn in a blood sample within two weeks of the anticipated falling date. If she doesn't fall within two weeks, submit another one. I hope that makes sense. Now, which mare should be tested? Well, if you wanna be as safe as possible, it's pretty inexpensive insurance to test all, all of the mares. Now, which ones are highest risk? Well, of course, number one here is obvious. If they've had an NI baby before, they're very high risk for doing it again. Of course, mares that have had blood transfusions because they have seen foreign blood before, they might already have these antibodies. Mares that have had a large number of foals, why do I say that? Well, the reason for that is the greater the number of foals a mare has, the greater number of chances she has had to see for her immune system to have been exposed to fetal blood. And if the fetal blood was incompatible, she will have made antibodies. And then mares with a history of dystocia or difficult deliveries, why there? Well, again, increased chance of mixing of blood with the fetus. And I don't have listed there, but of course, all mule pregnancies, your group probably is not breeding many mules, but we have clients that breed mules all of those should be tested every year because NI is so prevalent in mules. Question, let's see, there's some questions, I think. So the first question, what labs run the antibody test? Is it a fairly common, commonly offered test? That's a good question. It is not, it's not that commonly offered. Um, we offer it here and anybody can send it. Um, anybody could submit it. Uh, Haggard uh, Hospital in Kentucky will run as well. Um, those are the two I know. There may be one or two others in the US, not very many, but our lab will, will accept it from anywhere. So it, you just have to overnight it. I have a picture of the submission form. Uh, and the way you find it is if you, I, I practiced earlier to see if you can easily find, if you just Google UC Davis, NI and full, it comes right to it. It's one of the first ones. And uh, you would just overnight a sample from the mayor in her last two weeks. And uh, there's about a two or three day turnaround. They don't do it on the weekends. So you want to make sure to send it Monday, you know, be safest, send it Monday through Wednesday and overnight it. And then, um, yeah, and then you'll get a, a report pretty quickly. Uh, one of the questions was, uh, what is the average cost of the test? I'm kind of searching it. Do you happen to know that? That's a really good question. It's not very expensive. Let me look really quick here and I'll tell you in just a second. Any other questions while I'm looking at that? Um, yeah. If it's available, can the foal be given donor colostrum? Yes, I'm coming to that for, okay. for prevention, you bet. Any other questions? What is the blood typing box on the form for? Okay, so there's a few different tests. Um, you'll see the second one is the main one that you want, antibody screen. It tests the mare for any antibodies. Blood typing is if you have access to the stallion's blood, most stallion owners you know, don't like doing this, 
but if you you know if you know the stallion owner and they're willing to send whole blood a little sample and also of the mare they'll blood type them and tell you whether they're compatible or not but the the key the key test that you want for this is that antibody screen because that's checking the mare's serum for the antibodies themselves. It is $75, $75 for the cost of that. Any other questions? Okay, so a little bit on prevention. Uh, so we, we tested the mare and let's say she's positive. What do you do? Well, uh, you know, the foal's coming. You can't go, you can't go back and do a different breeding. So you have to prevent the foal from ingesting that colostrum. Again, remember I mentioned there's a golden window when foals ingest colostrum and are able to absorb the antibodies. And that's the first 24 really is the key, a little bit 36 and maybe in some foals a tiny bit up to 48. And, and let me take a sidestep just to mention, this is also this colostrum, this golden window is also why we strongly recommend if you're breeding horses to check every single one of the foals for an uh, IgG level. Um, a lot of vets use a, a stall side kit they can just do in a few minutes called the SNAP test. Some of you may be familiar with the SNAP test. That has nothing to do with NI. I just mention it because it tells you the foal got enough colostrum. And if they didn't, if they didn't get enough colostrum, they're really high risk for sepsis, that bloodstream infection. And then they would need plasma if they're already 24 hours of age or older. If they're younger than 24 hours, you can tube them with different colostrum. So that's a totally separate subject. I just want to mention while we're talking about this golden window, if a foal doesn't nurse right away and get good quality colostrum from the mother, let's say the mother leaked colostrum for a few days, you want to know that because if the foal's IgG or that IgG is antibody or immunoglobulin is low, it's really high risk for bloodstream infection, which can be fatal. So I strongly recommend every foal get checked for IgG at about 12 to 18 hours of age. Uh, because if you don't, you get really high risk of sepsis, of joint ill, umbilical infections, and so on. Now, so coming back to NI, you know the mare's positive on that screen. So it's vital that that birthing is accompanied or is monitored, that somebody is there because that foal cannot nurse her colostrum for about 36 hours. So that means as soon as the foal is born, we feed it colostrum from a different mare ideally and then muzzle it with a soft muzzle or we separate it put it you know put a panel so the mare can still see the baby but the baby can't get to her and then uh, us humans have to milk out the mare every few hours to get rid of that colostrum that has the poisonous antibodies and also to keep her making milk so that when you put the baby back in at 36 hours, she's making milk. So I hope that makes sense. You have to keep the foal from nursing that colostrum. That means they're either muzzled or they're separated by a panel so they cannot ingest her colostrum. That foaling has to be uh, monitored closely. There has to be somebody there because if you miss the foaling, and the foal gets up and nurses it, the highest efficiency of absorption of those antibodies is in the first few hours. So if you 
if your mare foals and you don't find the foal till four hours, well, it's been nursing for four hours. It has absorbed a lot of those antibodies already. So that foaling has to be uh, attended to so the foal, we know 100% sure the foal does not get any of that colostrum. Now we want the foal to get colostrum because as I mentioned, that protects from disease, from sepsis. So ideally, you, you will have planned when you're, when you're breeding horses, plan ahead and have some colostrum from another mare. What this means is, if you have a healthy mare, healthy foal, she foals, the foal nurses a bit, a few times. You can, and, and you test the mare's colostrum. There's easy ways to test the mare's colostrum. If she's got really strong colostrum, you can milk out about eight ounces, six to eight ounces and freeze it. It's not gonna hurt her baby any, as long as she had an ample and you check the baby's IgG at 12 to 18 hours. And then you freeze that colostrum and then you'll have it for a situation like this where you have a foal that you, you don't want to ingest colostrum from a mare that's known to produce NI. I hope that makes sense. Um, if you don't have frozen colostrum because that's, we, we call that uh, uh, golden milk. It's, it's uh, gold, liquid gold. If you don't have that colostrum, it's hard to get, not many places sell it. Uh, then the alternative is there are some commercial products that are IgG, concentrated IgG. There's one called Ceramune, that's probably the most common one used, but those are not a complete replacement for colostrum. They help, but they don't completely eliminate it. So, if you don't have colostrum, what we do is we give them a couple of units of that, that ceramune, the foals drink it, and then we also give them IV plasma, plasma transfusion. And that's a lot more expensive and you have to put an IV in and give the foal plasma transfusion. So in order to avoid that, you really would, you know, behooves you to have frozen colostrum, not just for this scenario, but you might have a mare that leaked out colostrum or a mare that didn't make enough or didn't make quality colostrum. And then you'd like to have some other colostrum that you can give the foal if there's any issue. Now you notice on my slide there, I say tested colostrum. If you wanna be really careful, you would send a tiny aliquot. So you'd milk out this mare, this healthy mare and foal, about six to eight ounces. You take a couple of cc's in a, in a little test tube and you ship it here to our lab and they will do that same antibody screen on the colostrum. Then you know 100% sure this colostrum that I'm freezing is safe. This mare is not gonna produce NI on my future foals. So it's tested. Well, that would be the ideal scenario. Again, about $75 dollars for that. Any other questions so far? I do have a comment, Gary from Cynthia. She says, thank you for doing this because she it, it surprises her that there are numerous vets and breeders that she works with that are not aware of this. Did you, how, how come? Like why, why is there so yeah, little that's awareness? A, it's a really good question. You know, the reason for that is it's infrequent enough that a lot of people haven't encountered it. And that's a good thing, it's not very common, but when it does happen, it's you know life-threatening. Foals can die if they don't get intensive treatment. You know, it's, it's estimated in thoroughbred, it's probably most common in thoroughbreds, estimated to be about 1% of foalings in thoroughbreds. So not real common, but also not rare in that breed. Um, then the next most, we probably see it in quarter horses and standard breads, but we see it in a variety of other breeds, Arabians, warm bloods, Appaloosas, uh, mules I mentioned. So vast uh, uh, variety of breeds, but it's just, just uncommon enough that a lot of breeders don't encounter it. You know, they, have, they might have to breed a hundred of them before they encounter it, if that 
makes sense. So it's just, it's one of those things. And then to be honest with you, I have had clients that lost foals, you know, the foal just died, you know, at a couple days of age. And they're asking me about it. Well, they didn't have a necropsy done or anything done. Well, I, I, uh, I would say some of those would have died from an eye, but nobody knew it, if that makes sense. You know, unless somebody notices that yellow, you know, if you open the mouth, or pull back the eyelid, you'll see the yellow coloring. But if you don't do those things, you may just notice the foals depressed, not nursing. And that's another thing I wanna point out is, if you have a foal that's not nursing or depressed, that's an emergency. They are not like adult horses where, you know, adult horses, if it, you know, if it's not colicky, but just not really eating, you might have a little bit of time to monitor it and take the temperature, you know, take the vitals, but in a newborn, if it's not nursing depressed, that's an emergency because they have very little reserve and they will crash very quickly. So a lot of foals, I talk to people, oh, my newborn foal died and I don't know why it was just st stopped nursing and then I found it dead. You know, some of those might be NI, but we don't know. So a lot of people don't know about it. So I'm glad you all did this, you know, we're, we're interested in this topic. Uh, because I hope it helps, you know, prevent this disease. We want to thank so, our director of operations, or, or I, or I mean, our board uh, director for that, Megan the Gray. She said that uh, we really needed to do a webinar about this topic. So I want to explicitly thank Megan for that. And then Cynthia also added another question, Gary. If I may ask you, sure. She she said if we test a colostrum donor mare before foaling and she's clean. Do we need to test the colostrum again, or can you just assume that she will be clean? You know, like or um, from that foaling period, you can assume she's clean. However, the next time she falls, ideally you would retest because she may have developed these antibodies in that next pregnancy. So it's not the type of thing where you know they may develop it. Uh, you ride away and then and then you'll know or they're clean after the first or second pregnancy and then they're clean from now no in fact the more foals they have the more likely they are to have an eye because they've had more opportunity to be exposed to the foals blood so if you're if you're freezing colostrum from the same mare every year you really want to test it every year to make sure it's clean okay so as long as she was tested. Uh, so if you take colostrum from the mare that was tested within the two, two week window before foaling, then you can be sure that her colostrum is clean as well. That's right. If, you, yeah. if you've if you got a blood sample and she falls within those two weeks, you're gonna be good. If she okay. goes beyond that two week, you know, right at 14, 15, 16 days, you really, you really wanna retest her then. Okay, and um, are there recommendations on where to buy a good foal muzzle? Um, good question. Um, this is an example of one. We have some nice, they're non-leather, they're fabric ones. And I don't know where, where our unit gets them from, but I, I will find out and let you know, Liz. I can email that info okay. to you. If, uh, I think we're also going to do um, a list of testing options or testing facilities for the colostrum and the blood because you can do it both, right? So before the folding, yes. you do the blood. And of course, obviously, after the folding, you can do the colostrum. Yeah. If you want to use her as a donor mare. Yeah. So, because yeah. I have a question, it says, I'm sorry I missed how you test the banked colostrum. Okay. So for testing the bank colostrum, when you're uh, obtaining it from the mare, you're milking the mare, you know, to save, let's say eight ounces, just take a little aliquot of it and put it in a, a test, a little test tube or a, a red top tube that, that your vet uses to collect blood that red, the red tops are fine. And then you chill it with an ice pack and FedEx it to the lab, either here or um, Haggers or the two that I know in Kentucky. And then they will test that the same way they do the mother's serum. Okay. And then there's a question, should we not have to worry about maidens or do do? Good, really good question. So really good question. You would think 
that you don't have to worry about a maiden because she hasn't had previous pregnancies. However, they still can. They're, they're less likely, again, as I mentioned earlier, the more, the more foals, the greater the number of foals a mare has had, the more likely she is to have NI. But having said that, maidens also can have NI. I've, I've had cases of NI for maiden mares. And the reason it happens in those maiden mares is if she has a little uterine placental bleed or attachment, let's say another horse kicked her belly or she had an accident that somebody's not aware of and everything's fine, the, horse, the mare and foal are fine, but a little bruising occurred such that her blood mixed a little bit with the fetal blood then her immune system's going to mount a response. And if that occurs during her pregnancy, she's going to put those, coloss those uh, antibodies into her colostrum. So yes, a maiden mare can produce NI foals. I'm glad that that was asked. Thank you, Gary. Um, this was just a case to illustrate. This was a little uh, paint filly that we had that came to us at five days of age and she was weak, you know, really nothing specific about her. She was just weak, not nursing. You can see here in the background, the mare's dripping milk because the foal has not been nursing. And she was previously healthy yesterday, fine. Um, today, depressed, lying down a lot, not nursing. And fortunately her owner, brought her in quickly and didn't, didn't monitor. And she was quite pale. Um, this is showing pale. And it's hard to see on the slide, but she was developing some yellow tinge here. I don't know if you can see that. Not as yellow as the other picture I show you, but she was starting. And on her lab work, her, she was very, very anemic. This is called Paxil Lyme. It was only 7% and then dropped to five. And normal for foals this age is about 26 to 40%. So she was very, very anemic. And had her owner not brought her in, she would have died sometime that night. And we confirmed in her mother's blood, the mother had antibodies against blood group AA. The baby was AA positive, the mare was AA negative, the stallion was AA positive. So the baby inherited it from the stallion. So we treated her with some IV fluid, some oxygen, and then we gave her a blood transfusion. Now, this is not important for you to know, but it's interesting. The blood transfusion, you'll notice all the red blood cells are at the bottom and the serum's on the top. This is the mother's blood. And we use the mother's blood as the transfusion. However, we only want her red blood cells. We do not want her serum because her serum is poison. Her serum has those antibodies that ended up in the colostrum. So what we do is we take her blood and it's very safe to take, we take a small amount of blood from the mother. It doesn't affect her at all but then we have to spin it in a centrifuge and we wash it. It's called washed red blood cells. We wash it three times. And the reason we wash those red blood cells is to get rid of all those poisonous antibodies. Now you might ask, why are you going through all this trouble to use the mother's red cells? Well, because we know 100% certain those antibodies that the full absorbed in the mother's colostrum will not destroy her own red cells. They will not destroy her own red cells. They will only destroy the AA positive cells, which are in the foal. Now, you could use another horse, but you have to know that other horse blood donor is also not going to have antibodies in the serum. Otherwise, you got to do three time washing on that one. And you also have to make sure that horse's red blood cells are negative to whatever the mother's making, in this case, AA, because if that 
if that other donor horse is AA positive, her colostral antibodies that are floating around the foal are also going to destroy those donor cells. That's why the mother is the best donor because those antibodies won't destroy her red cells, but you have to get rid of that serum and that's very time consuming. The next alternative, you know, can you use another blood donor? Yes, but you wanna use one that you know is negative for those most common blood types like AA and QA, because if that blood donor's AA and Q or QA positive, and you don't know what blood type the mother made antibodies against, again, you're gonna risk destroying those, those donor blood, red blood cells that were transfused. I hope that makes sense. And the reason for that, I say that is there's not a lot of time to get the blood typing done. Let's say you're at, you know, you're at a stable with one or a hospital and you say, oh, I want to use this horse over here and this paddock as a blood donor. Well, there isn't time to blood type it and blood type the mother. So you don't know what blood type she made antibodies against unless you've screened her. Now, if you had screened her, you might know it's against AA. You would have prevented the foal from nursing and none of this would have happened. So after the blood transfusion, we got the baby's packs of Lyme from five up to the high teens, which was enough to keep her healthy. And then she went home after a few days. And that's all I have for you. I'm happy to answer any other questions. We got two questions. One is, can there be long-term effect on the foal or once treated, it becomes part of the past? That, okay, great question. Once treated, it's part of the past. As long as we get to them you know, early enough. The one rare exception to that would be if the foal, if we get it late, and they have destroyed so many red cells that that bilirubin pigment gets really high, it can affect their brain, but that's pretty rare. So normally once you, you treat them, they go home, no, they never look back. Okay, and if you do that transfusion, what happens to the foal's blood type? Like if the foal is AA positive and the mare is AA negative, and then the mare makes antibodies against the AA positive, and then you give the red blood cells of the mare, which is AA negative to the AA positive foal, will that change the AA positive of the foal then? Because then you have two types no. of red blood cells in the foal, right? Yeah, good question. There are two types of red blood cells, but very transiently. Those donated blood cells, they only last about seven to 10 days, just long enough for the foal to start making its own new red blood cells. Oh, okay. Yeah. Then, then the mother, then the maternal red cells are gone. Now that raises another issue, which is let's say the antibody was against AA, the foal is AA positive, the mare's AA negative, you use her blood as for the transfusion, all is good there in the short term. Well, let's say the mare was positive for another different antigen, let's say to QA, and the baby is negative. That baby potentially is going to make antibodies yeah. against <laughs> QA, which is not a problem in the short term. But if she is a broodmare down the road, she could make antibodies against QA that her mother had. That's why in that list of who to test, which mares to test, you know, again, to be safest, I would test all mares, but high risk, one of the categories was a mare that had a previous blood transfusion, and that would include a filly that had a blood transfusion. So in other words, if the filly was an ant, like this paint filly, we recommended to her owner, if you go to breed her, make sure to test her against NI in case, because there are 400,000 combinations of blood types in horses, in case she made antibodies against something that her mother has that she doesn't have, you want to test to make sure she doesn't do this to her own offspring.
Yeah, that makes sense. Does anybody else have uh, questions? More Since questions. we have a few minutes, oh, there's a question? Mm, not yet. Since we have a few minutes, I was briefly gonna mention an even less common syndrome, which is very similar, but it's against the Foles platelets, not the red blood cells. So we call that thrombocytopenia. Thrombocyte is the platelet. These are clotting cells. And thrombocytopenia means low. It's like anemia, but for the platelets. And this is pretty uncommon, but we see it occasionally. These foals are not anemic. They're not yellow. They're not jaundiced, but instead they have bleeding problems because the mother made antibodies against the foals platelets. And you see these little bruisings this baby has. This is also very common in mule foals because donkey platelets are very strongly antigenic to horses. Pretty rare, fortunately, in horses, but this is what it produces, these little hemorrhages uh, in the gums and the vulva and hematomas where we put the IV in. And, um, and it's very similar, but it is against the place and it's, and it's far less common. The downside of this is there is not an easy way to test a mare for it while during, pre like I talked about screening the mare for NI, there's not a way to screen her for this. The good news is this is quite rare. The other good news is it's not as life-threatening as NI because NI makes them so anemic, the foals can die. These foals usually do fine. You just keep them quiet so they're not ripping around a pasture and getting injured. Keep them quiet so they don't bleed. And within a few days, they start making their own platelets again. But I just wanted to mention it because it's a very similar syndrome, although quite rare, fortunately. And I'll leave my email address up here if anybody has any questions. And Liz, I'll email you about the full muzzles and some links. Okay, for the tests would be nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be great. Kelly, do you have more questions for Gary? I don't have questions, but I did just go to the UC Davis site looking search that um, equine and eye testing and it gives really good instructions for um, collecting and shipping the samples, um, how to handle it, keeping it in the refrigerator, putting it in an ice pack when you ship it. It has very explicit details or, on, and instructions on how to do that. Cause that was my, one of my questions, but it is on the website on how to do that. Okay, great. We'll share it with the members, right? And yes. then uh, Gary, I have one more question. Like, do you think there's a growth of NI in, in warm bloods or do you see that? Or is that research right now if there is growth? Like there's, there are more getting it or not? That's a really good question. I don't have the answer. I don't know anybody that's looking at specific breed prevalences right now. Um, there was some early studies looking at it in thoroughbreds where I mentioned it was about 1% of thoroughbred foaling. So I don't have an accurate estimate in warm bloods other than to say it's less common than that. It's less than that 1%, but I can't give you an exact figure, but we do certainly do see it occasionally in warm bloods. Yeah. And maybe like what you said when, when, you know, when they're just too late and the foal already died, you know, and then you don't know that it was actually an eye. But That's it would right. be interesting to know if, um, you know, if there are programs, veterinary programs that are like researching this, if there is, mm -hmm. you know, are more foals getting it or not, like that is interesting, maybe. Um, yeah, absolutely. I, I will I, say this, I don't know if um, anybody also, also has Frisians. It's quite common in Frisians because mm -hmm. the gene pool in the U.S. is so low that NI is quite common. And we have a, a lot of Frisian breeders test their mares every year because they're very aware of it. It's common enough that they do see it and they do test. Do you think that if there's a large inbreeding percentage in a population that there will be more NI? Yes, um, because that, that's what's theorized as to why uh, Frisians have it very commonly because Free, the Frisian mares are negative for 
a lot of the factors. And then there are so few stallions breeding that if, if one or two is positive, then that, then the NI rate goes quite, you know, gets quite high, if that makes sense. And would you recommend that like all stallion owners get their stallions tested and put it out there what the blood groups are, or is yeah. that a risky question? Yeah, I think, you know, that would be really helpful if stallion owners, you know, again, I, I know very few that do that, but if they would have their stallions blood typed. Now these Frisian stallion owners, a lot of them do because they're aware of it. And then the owner of the mare can say, okay, my mare is negative. I'm not going to breed to that stallion or I am going to breed, but then I know I have to muzzle the foal and, you know, test the mare, muzzle the foal, not let it, you know, have an alternate colostrum source. But, but it doesn't, or it, will it always get an eye if, you know, maybe it doesn't? Is no, it not, like not with always. Yeah, not all, especially a mare that maybe a maiden or has only had a couple foals. If she has not, if her immune system has not mixed with that fetal blood, she may not have antibodies yeah. yet, but it's a ticking time bomb and eventually she likely will. Yeah, okay. Okay, that's so interesting. We'll see, you know, for example, we'll see uh, mule breeders they don't see an eye that commonly in the first year, but as the mares go along, most mares eventually develop antibodies against donkey factor. Um, I have one more question. It says, when a foal is born and nurses, how soon do you see the first signs? Okay, good question. Yeah, it takes a little bit of time for the red cells to get destroyed the more colostral antibodies they nurse, the quicker it occurs. But usually we see them between one and five days of age. So it's sort of 24 hours to five days of age, that range. But we have see them, seen them as far out as nine days with this syndrome. Wow. And also earlier, right? Because you mentioned before that after four hours, they already have a substantial amount of the antibodies in, in them, right? Yeah, if a mare has really uh, high levels of antibodies in the colostrum and the foal is an aggressive nurser and gets a lot of these, usually, you know, there's a lag phase because it takes time for the antibody to bind the red cell and then the red cell to get damaged and the spleen to take out. So usually there's a delay. Uh, you know, I would say probably the earliest it would happen is about 12 hours of age. And that would be one that got it really early, quite a bit of colostrum. Okay. And does Thank the you, chance of um, this treatment being successful um, seem to differ the earlier or later that the symptoms show up? Or I know you mentioned, you know, getting the foal in there as quickly as possible. Yeah, definitely as quickly as possible. But yes, the more antibody they absorb, the more severe they are, the quicker it happens, the more severe anemia they develop. And not only that, it also depends on what blood group it's occurring to. AA and QA are the strongest. Mm -hmm. So if we have one that is AA, they'll be more severe than let's say one that is uh, AC or uh, D blood group or K or one of these other blood groups, that one occurs a little more slowly. We tend to see those foals later and we tend to see those foals more mild because the antigen antigenicity is not as strong. By that, I mean the mare's immune response is not as dramatic to those other blood groups as it is to AA or QA or donkey factor. Those are the very strongest her, her immune system will make the most powerful response, highest level of antibodies to those particular factors. Uh, I have a question. It says, if you don't see the foals until they are five days old, can they drink their dam's milk by that time? Yes, they can. So they can, after 48 hours, they can drink whatever milk because they're gut is no longer capable of absorbing those antibodies. So what we do, we muzzle the foals 
48 hours and 48 hours is stretching it to be safe. And then we take the muzzle off and the foal nurses the mare freely, even though she still has a little bit every day that goes by, there's less and less, but even though she still has antibodies, he's not going to absorb them. Interesting. Thank you, Gary. You bet. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. Really interesting. Okay. Well, um, if there's no more questions, guys, you can email Gary if you have a new question or an additional question popping up, sure. right, Gary? And uh, thank you so much for your uh, information. It was very interesting. Thanks for having me. Gary, thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye.